everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay and this is Life with Lindsay. Today we have a whip and chat. If you don't know what a whip and chat is, that is when I work on my current whip, WIP, which is work in progress. You can pull out whatever it is that you are working on and work alongside with me. Um, fair warning, that's my tiny human. I turned down the monitor, but she is singing some song about unicorns right now, so you may hear her in the background. Um, you can work on another craft project, you can work on some household chores, you can work on whatever it is that you want to be working on. I've had people listen while they're driving, while they're at work, while they're avoiding work, <laughs> they're hanging out. Whatever it is that you want to do, there is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat. I am starting a new little section here. Uh, I want to say when I'm done this section... That I am about halfway full. Here is a teacup right here. And the white rabbit, you can see like the bottom of the white rabbit. Um, so I'm excited. You guys, I'm actually filming on a day that I typically film. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I've been so under the weather for so long. I've been so behind on everything. Don't mind me moving things around while I'm chit-chatting with you. So I am going to pull out a couple colors here, I guess. Let's see how this goes. How are you guys doing? If you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and other crafting related content. Uh, if you have been here before, welcome back. If you are new, I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard the Hot Mess Express. Let's be friends. So this is, I don't remember the name of this tray. The Beast, maybe? From NYX, NYX's Notions. Um, I do like it. I will say... I've had better success with square drills in here than round drills, but it's obviously not preventing me from using it, pulling out a random pen. If you guys see me using a plethora of pens in this video, you know, that's accurate. I swap between pens based off of the multi-blazer, pretty much. Um, this kid needs to calm her tits. She is super amped. It's been... A very good day in our household today and I know she doesn't really nap anymore if you guys are new here I've got a four-year-old and um, she has a nap time whether she naps or not so currently she's in her room for her nap and because today was a good day I told her after her nap I will let her watch one episode of Paw Patrol and she is all excited so but no different than any other day where she's wide awake during her nap. So, if you guys missed my last whip and chat, which went up <laughs> in the grand scheme of things only a couple days ago, uh, I will make sure to link that one up in the eye. If you are, uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought, trying to concentrate, um, Keep your eyes peeled for those Easter eggs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, when I do my event roundup videos, I do event videos. I'm trying to do them every week. I got the first week in on time, and then the second and third was together, also late. But just keep your eyeballs out. They're there. If you guys have your notifications set for my channel, um, then you'll know when they go live. I don't operate on any schedule. Sick or not, I really don't operate on any schedule, other than I try to get... My whipping chats out pretty consistently, recorded Sunday, put up Monday, but, you know, life. Such is life, friends. But anyway, if you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> welcome to my world. Everything is super rambly. In my mind, the jump from one thing to another makes total sense. But I imagine that not everybody follows along my train of thought, so uh, if you don't, I do little Easter eggs in my videos during my Alice in Winter Wonderland event. And that is still going on. You are more than welcome to join it at any time during the duration of the event. So, if you guys are seeing this the day that it's posted and you're like, oh man, I would have loved to have joined the event, you can still join the event. The event runs through February 14th. Uh, so you have plenty of time to join in. And depending on how frequently you diamond paint or the size of your canvas, you could easily complete a canvas or not because it's not a race. It's just about having fun. So I put in these little Easter eggs. They're little tiny little gifts or little things that pop up on the screen for a very small fraction of time. The first person to find it, send me a screenshot of it. 
you can either send it to my Instagram or you can send it to my email, which I do have listed down below. You'll be the featured account for the next event video. So that's always fun. People love having their uh, account shared. You know, you can either showcase yourself or if you own a small, small business or if you love a small business and you want more eyeballs on it, you know, things like that. So um, anyway, let's get into the week. I hope that you guys are well. I... <laughs> I am ready for 2022 to have a reset button. How about you guys? Uh, I hope that you are out there, like, not just surviving, but thriving. Because I want that to be me. I want that to be me so badly. But it's not. And that's okay. You know? It, it, I looked at my Facebook memories. Facebook memories are, like, a cool mistress like that. Sometimes you're like, oh, man, remember when we did X, Y, and Z and it was so great? Or it'll be like, oh, remember that time three years ago when we spent, like, a week going back to the ER three times for my kid's ear infection? That's that's the one that I got. My kid had RSV and an ear infection, I think it was three years ago, like, packed to back, and it was exhausting. That might have even been four years ago. I don't remember. Um, but it's so weird. I've been looking at, you know, Snapchat and Google Photos and things like that will show you... Um, your memory is also all these little clips of Briar as an infant before she got her airway diagnosis. And I'm like, wow, if I knew then what I know now, you know, isn't that the case? So anyway, Sunday, last Sunday, I caved and actually went to urgent care. If you guys did not see the last video, Super Cliff's Notes version. I had been dealing with some ear pain for a couple days and telling myself I was going to go to urgent care and then kept chickening out and uh, because I didn't want to really believe that I could still be sick. I have um, not felt well for the majority of time since the day after Christmas. I got my positive COVID test. I don't even remember how long ago now. And, like, I've literally just had, like, a couple good days since that happened. And then I got an ear infection. That was a secondary ear infection. So, um, it sucks. It hurts. Um, I am finishing up my amoxicillin today. And I finished the prednisone yesterday. However, I sent the doctor that I saw a message through the portal because it is now, that was a week ago. So it's, it's like a week and a half. Um, and my ear still hurts. Uh, it's not the same kind of excruciating pain that it was, but like, I don't really want to be dealing with ear pain on top of fatigue and all this other fun stuff. I just, January 2022 has been the longest year of my life. Does anybody else feel that? I feel that so deep in my core right now. <laughs> uh, and my poor kid just wants to go do stuff. And she, the one day she just looked at me and she's like, Mommy's sick again. And I'm like, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Like, I'm trying. I'm really, really trying. And she's like, it's okay. You know, sometimes when she sees that mommy is not doing great, she'll just snuggle up with me. But other times she's just like, cool, thanks, mom. Okay, you know, as anybody would be in that situation at four. But, um, you know, if you are a person who has had really great experiences with the medical world for whatever yourself, your child, your spouse, your parent, whatever it is. Like I envy you because, um, I know this statement's going to ruffle some feathers. So ruffle, ruffle, uh, fat phobia, medical fat phobia is a real thing. Um, so like I said, I have a four year old and after I had my baby, this is a slight tangent, but it, it has to do with medical fat phobia. And um, I was really struggling, like really, really struggling. And I remember going 
to her six week checkup, which is subsequently also like the checkup to assess the parent. And I had said to them, like, I don't think that what I'm feeling is normal. And everybody kept telling, oh, no, 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 this is just normal baby blues. And it wasn't. And I went untreated for postpartum depression and anxiety for almost a year. And I struggled so immensely. Um, I kept questioning my sanity, wondering what was wrong with me, like... It was, it was hard. And if anybody out there is in the throes of it right now, please reach out for help. Because postpartum anything is no joke. Um, but when I went to the doctor, uh, which was the first primary care physician that I had sought out in a very long time, um, they turned it around to my weight. And wanted me to uh, be on a Mediterranean style food intake because they, they you know they don't want to call it a diet and I'm like I live I live in Pennsylvania like where do you want me to get fresh seafood from like uh, I'm not fishing out of the Susquehanna River for dirty fish you know what I mean like um and Things that have nothing to do with weight, like, should never be brought up when you see a doctor. And I am well aware, which I'm sure some of you are well aware, that I am very overweight. And that's totally okay. I also want to treat my body with kindness because I've been surviving a pandemic, like many of you, and... I've been dealing with mental health struggles through that pandemic. And so I just didn't want to go to urgent care and have it relayed back. That's the worst feeling when you're like, oh, yeah, I pick up that drill. And then you have to change the wax. I'm actually just going to kind of shove the wax with the uh, tweezers and just kind of keep going. So anyway, I uh, I got to urgent care and... Um, they were like, okay, we need you to hop on the scale. And I was like, yeah, I was just here, uh, two weeks ago, whatever it was. I don't even remember at this point how long everything's been. And I was like, do I really need to? And she's like, well, if you really don't want to. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to. You can just put down the same number. She's like, all right. And she didn't actually give me much of a hassle, but I know there are some people out there who like absolutely refuse to like allow people not to get on the scale every time they go to the doctor's office. And it's like, who cares? Just let it go. So, um, that was my Sunday and I had wished that I had gone to the urgent care sooner because like, I really, um, have been dealing with ear pain at that point for like three or four days. And then now it's been an entire week past that point. So, um, my husband just walked in the room. So if you hear any husband noises in the background, say, hi, husband. Hello. It's funny. My husband and I both work on the third floor of our house. If you guys didn't know, my husband's a data monster. He customizes Funko Pops. Uh, all of his information, in case anyone's curious, is always listed down below. And he came up the stairs from the first floor to the second floor and the second that gate clicks the baby gate <laughs> you're gonna hear my daughter like run across the room I don't know if she thinks every time the gate opens that like someone's coming in for her because that's never how it is but um it's just funny I every single time he comes upstairs I can hear the gate click and then her run across the room so you know <laughs> so Monday I had, so Sunday they called in my prescriptions, but our pharmacy, we go to the pharmacy in our supermarket and, um, that works for us like 99% of the time. Um, we were at CVS, but it was significantly more expensive. And, uh, the only plus side to CVS versus the supermarket is like CVS has a drive through uh, does your CVS have a drive through Let me know down below. Um, so 
our CVS, I'm sorry, our pharmacy in the market closes on Sundays at 2. So by the time I had left the Med Express or the Urgent Care or wherever I went, it was already closed. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll just start it tomorrow anyway. Um, which is what the doctor recommended because it's uh, tapered doses. If anybody's ever had to do that, where like you start out and you take like three doses in, in for two days and then two doses for two days and then one dose for two, whatever it is. Um, so I go Monday to pick up my meds and I was told that I was getting another round of prednisone and that was it. And so I go and the lady working is like, I don't have a prescription for prednisone. I have an amoxicillin, which amoxicillin makes so much more sense because it's an antibiotic. Um, but I was told prednisone and she was like, well, I don't have a prescription for that. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I guess I'll figure this out myself. So, um, meanwhile, there is an old man who, if I had to guess was in his eighties, that at most was six inches away from my butt. I was like, dude, nobody's going to step in front of you to get your medicine. Like, I'm first in line. Just back up. Um, which, I swear, no offense to old people, but I swear, like, personal boundaries, people. <clears throat> personal boundaries. Um, totally just dropped that right on my canvas. So, I go out to my car. Now, mind you, we had this whole day planned with things to do, and the longer it takes in the pharmacy, the longer it takes for us to get out and do the things that we're trying to do, you know? So, I call the urgent care, and they're like, oh, no, we definitely called over um, a prescription for prednisone. And I was like, oh, they're telling me amoxicillin. And they're like, oh, no, we called that over, too. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I go back inside, wait in line again, because, you know, God forbid, and I said, I just got off the phone with the doctor's office, and they're telling me that they sent over a prescription for both, and the same pharmacist who literally just spent 15 minutes telling me she didn't have a prescription said to me, yeah, I told you that I had the prescription, but it just wasn't ready. And I'm like, oh my God, you literally told me that you only had a prescription for amoxicillin. And she's like, I did not. And she was like starting to like puff out her chest. You guys, I was like, this was like 45 minutes of my day. And all I wanted to do was get my medicine so that we could keep going. And she was trying to go back and forth with me. And at this point I was just like, I'm over it. I'm over it and um <sighs> so the other pharmacist came over now one of them i think is actually a pharmacist and i think the other farm farm tech but i'm like look if you were trying to tell me that you had one prescription already filled and the other was on hand you just had to fill it then that should have been what you expressed not that you didn't have a prescription for that after i said well that's what they told me they they sent over like it's not a very complicated thing, but this woman made it far more complicated than she needed it to be. And so I was pissed <laughs> and I was, I was already over the day and this was Monday morning. And, uh, yeah. So my daughter had said to us, all she wanted to do was walk around the mall. And I was like, walk around the mall. Like, I know what that means. That means you want to go in stores. That means you want to go shopping. That means you want to do stuff and buy stuff and spend money. Well, it turns out she really did just want to walk around the mall. I cannot get this back pillow comfortable. Um, I, total side note, I work in a gaming chair and I, it's pretty meh, but I was on a family Zoom last night and both my mom and my aunt were like, is that new? And I'm like, no, I've been sitting in this now for at least a couple months. We do family Zooms a couple times a month. Anyway, back to, back to the story at hand. So we went to the mall, which was like, you know, another half hour away. And then we walked around just like she said, and we went to a bunch of stores. We went to an FYE. We went to Build-A-Bear. We went to Box Lunch. We went to Go Calendars. We went to Hallmark. We did a bunch of different things. Um, the Go Calendars store tends to do really well for us for her. 
Um, <coughs> excuse me. They usually have a lot of My Little Pony and Paw Patrol and Princess and a lot of uh, stuffed animals and things that she likes. So it gives her an opportunity if she has money to spend. Like sometimes we'll tell her straight up like we're not going into the store to buy anything today. And she's been doing much better with that, which I'm I'm quite pleased with, obviously. But we went in and she picked out a Sky from Paw Patrol, but she picked out the Moto Pup version. So she's like in her little leather cat suit or whatever it is. Whatever it's called that people wear when they ride sky. the Dominatrix Sky. <laughs> um but she did really well. Like, we went to Build-A-Bear, and there was none there that she really loved. And she wanted one of these. I had one for myself as a kid. If I can find a photo, I'll put it here. If not, I hope my description explains it well enough. But they're one of those, like, foam seats that you can unfold, and then it becomes, like, something you sleep on. And... They had one for your stuffed friends. And she was like, this is amazing. And we were like, well, we don't need to get that today. And she's like, okay. And, like, I'm telling you guys, she did so well. I was so proud of her. Um, and I was just happy that when she said she wanted to walk around the mall, that, like, she literally just wanted to walk around the mall. It wasn't like, I want to spend all of your money and I want to make you go insane and lose your mind, mommy. And, uh, yeah. But... Then we went to lunch, um, and she did pretty well. Uh, she got upset, so they put us in one of those, like, U-shaped booths, and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna fit in that. And the lady's like, well, you can turn the booth, but you have a square table in this U-shaped booth, so even if I angle it, unless, like, Brian and I were sitting, like, cat corner together, there's no way we could have gotten... But then she got upset because she was so excited to sit in this cool booth. Um, you know, typical four-year-old stuff. Because she doesn't understand. Mommy just is a little too fat to fit in this booth. Mommy's belly's a little bit too big. And um, it is what it is. I obviously, when I can get my... Uh, how do I say this nicely? Because I know there's somebody out there listening to this being like, well, if you just lost weight. Well, if I could just get my mental health to be at a little bit better of a spot, then I can worry about that. Right now, I'm a little bit more worried about that. So, the next day was Tuesday, which is, oh, sorry. After we went to lunch, I came home. And this has been my new norm, that if we do anything, like anything at all, I just straight, I crash. And I fell asleep during her nap time. And I know it was a long day because even my husband came up and like laid down for like a half hour. But uh, it was, this is, this is, this is how it's been since I've gotten sick that exerting any amount of energy just wears my body <coughs> way too thin. So, um, but the next day was Tuesday. Tuesday is an ice skating day and that was a lot of fun. Um, we had a little bit of a mini freak out. So when the pandemic started... I'm going to change my wax out. My daughter was two, like newly two. Um, she has a fall birthday and so, she, I mean, I guess she wasn't that newly. Two. Yeah, she was like two and a half. Anyway, I'm just going to keep going. Lindsay, stop with the semantics. Um, this is my Swax wax from Abigail Marie. I will link this down <laughs> below. You guys, this is, I love this stuff. Um... I've really been enjoying it. Like, really, really been enjoying it. And I've been using it for what feels like forever. And it barely looks like it's been touched. Um, I have not used this for my multiplacer. I also have not tried to use this for my multiplacer. Because for me, the pink wax works, wax works great for my multiplacers. Um, so if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it kind of thing. Uh, don't mind me as I'm, like, dropping drills all over my table here. Um, anywho, whew, you guys. So, um, where was I? Tuesday. Oh, the, a lot of the masks that we got her in the beginning of the pandemic were, like, super, super tiny. Um, like, the ones we could find because she's a peanut. She's still a peanut, you guys. She's still a peanut. 
Um, but a lot of them were really just too big for her for a while. So a lot of them now are starting to actually like really fit her face nicely. And she has this one mask that has uh, characters on it. And it has a wire in the nose, which is great if it's done properly. Well, she had a little bit of a freak out out on the ice. We didn't know what was going on. She came off the ice, which is not like her to just need to come off and reset and, you know, things like that. And it turns out that the wire was like really bothering her nose. But you got to figure if you're a little kid and you already have trouble using your words to describe what it is that you're feeling, how are you going to decipher that? the thing that hurts is a little piece of metal on your mask across your nose versus your butt from falling on it. Like it's, it, it was a little bit difficult, but once we figured it out, we changed her mask out. We gave her a new pair of gloves. It was like, we recharged her. She was back out and ready to go. And, um, it, that was, that was a moment. Cause we were like, what is happening? And then we took off her mask so she could, because she was like pulling, I don't know. It was just one of those things that it was coincidental, coincidental we figured out that that's what was going on. But, um, oh, and the little boy from the previous week whose mom never encouraged him to get on the ice, he was not there this week, in case, in case anyone was curious. But, um, she got really upset, too, after coming off the ice and she kept saying to us I'm not a great skater which I don't know where she got that from um there are a couple kids in the group that are bigger than her who have not necessarily been doing this quite as long as her and they can do more things but I think that's just because they're bigger um but my daughter is really I think she's very talented and she blows me away and we, you know, reassured her, you're doing a great job. You're a great ice skater and keep going, keep going. And she was like, okay, and went back out. And it, you know, it, it hurts your, your mama heart or your dad heart or your parent heart when your kiddo has those kinds of moments, feels less than, especially when they're so little. Because we've never put it on her. Like, the goal is not for her to be an Olympic or world championship skater. It's for her to just do this and enjoy it. And if she doesn't enjoy it, we're not going to do it anymore. You know, um, this is just a really great way for her to socialize with, uh, peers. And she chose the sport in case anyone was curious. Uh, she actually asked for quite a while before I said yes, because I didn't know if she was old enough. You know, I don't know. I ice skated as a kid, but like, I don't remember how old I was when I started. I don't, you know, I don't know these things. It's very weird. Side note. As a parent, like, how do you know all of the stuff about activities for your kids? Let me expand on that. So, if you have a kiddo who is school-aged... I know the internet exists, so I'm sure someone's going to be like, that's where everybody gets all the information. But I had no idea. I never would have thought to sign my kid up for summer camp in January. I never would have thought, oh, I need to have my kindergarten registration done by this time of year. Like, how do people know that? Do they have, like, a whisper down the lane? Is there a phone chart? Do they let somebody else know? Like, do they go, oh, you have a kid, so let me tell you this. Damn it, I picked another pen that doesn't have any wax in it. Um... And it's super annoying because my husband and I are looking for other activities for her to do, like, when school's out over the summer. But, like, okay, so we live right by the county line. So the one thing we were looking at was t-ball. It's Briar really, daddy loves baseball, so she wants to learn how to play baseball. Um, and the town over has Little League for ages four to, I think, seven. But you have to be a resident of that township, which we are not. But the one in my township, which is literally the next town over, it's for five-year-olds. And I'm like, how am I supposed to know, like, all these activities? It's pain in the butt. Oh, my God. Do I need more wax in this pen completely? 
because I am not trying to be about that life. But anyway, let's keep going. So after figure skating, we went to Target um, and got a couple uh, dollar, uh, dollar spot dinosaurs. You guys, these things are amazing. They've gone with us in the car. They have gone with us to the restaurants. They, they are just well worth the dollar that we spent. I think we got three of them. We did get three of them. And they each tell you what they are, but my daughter takes the tags off, so I'm like, crap, what dinosaur was that? <laughs> and, uh, then we went to lunch afterwards, and, um, but when we were at Target, not only did we get the dinosaurs, we went over the section where, like, the books are, that's where they usually, at least our Target, that's where they have the pop figures, <coughs> excuse me, which my husband utilizes for customs and for his personal collection, and... Um, we were looking and they had this princess cookbook, Disney princess cookbook. Now listen, whoever wrote this cookbook, you guys missed a huge mark. So like, you'll have little things that are like princess Ariel's blah, 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 princess bells, blah, blah, blah. You guys, if you have ever seen... The Princess and the Frog. Tiana, there's like a huge thing. The whole storyline is about food. About her daddy's gumbo. Her man catching beignets. Not one of the recipes mentioned in the movie is in that book. What is there? Sandwiches shaped like flowers. Um, and uh, meatloaf. Because nothing screams recipe for kids like meatloaf. <laughs> Oh, you guys, we did not buy that. Um, and then there was one of those, uh, if you've ever seen them, they're like five minute stories. They have a bunch of stories that are in the book, but they are all five minutes long. Um, which I mean, I guess that's give or take because some people speed through them and others don't, but it's great because, you know, you don't have to read a super, super long book. But if your kid wants another, you can read another story. And we got the Paw Patrol version of that. And um, it was so funny. It was it was so funny. And then she wanted to go to the real Taco Bell, as she calls it. Which she has informed me is her favorite restaurant. And she is so funny. So one of my favorite things at... If you guys don't... If you have, like, have never been here before and you're like, what is the real Taco Bell? It's like an actually authentic... Mexican restaurant, but she calls it that for some reason. And, um, one of my favorite things to get there is their tortilla soup. Uh, not chicken tortilla soup, just regular tortilla soup. And it is so good. Like I said to my husband, like, if I get sick again, this is, this is what I want. Like, just a big container of it. But the way they serve it is, like, they bring out the bowl with all the stuff in it. And then you get a little tiny bowl on the side that has the... Uh, tomatoes, onions, and cilantro. And no lie, Briar will sit there and take the whole fistful of cilantro and just eat it to herself. <laughs> Are you guys team cilantro or not? My husband loves cilantro. He could eat it, like, all day. Me, I can only have cilantro in, like, smaller doses or it starts to taste like soap. I do like cilantro, but I don't love, like, excessive amounts, if that makes sense. But I know there are some people out there who are just, like, very vehement reaction like nope 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 they just don't they don't do it um if you guys when i said earlier when that this is better for you can see like i'll shake it and they just won't like get in the grooves at all or you can see like the spaces where it won't slide down what thank you madonna <laughs> so tuesday night i made this <laughs> You guys, my husband is dancing. He's, like, directly in my line of sight. That's the second time you've done that dance move today. What was the first? I don't remember. It was downstairs. Uh, it was a song that was you guys were watching reels, and it was a song that was playing on the reels. Yeah, but I don't remember what song it was. Yeah. It made Briar dance, though. It was funny. Um, sorry, guys. Um, where was I? Oh, so, Tuesday night, I had this genius idea, which... 
let's discuss. <laughs> if you have ever been to the Melting Pot, it is a fondue restaurant. Um, I don't know if they are international or if they're just U.S. based. But it's a fondue restaurant. They have the fondue pots in the middle of the table. You pick one, two, three, or four courses. They're not cheap. But they had the special for Thursday, no, Wednesday. Wednesday for this BFF something or other. And, like, not that it was cheap, but it was far less expensive. And so I was like, Brian, would you be interested in doing this? Because there's no point in me paying for four courses for Briar. Because, you know, she'll nibble at things. And he was like, okay, we can do it. So we prepped her for it. We showed her videos of what fondue is. This kid, you guys, she's like a cheese fanatic. So I thought, oh, this will be perfect. Right up her alley. Well... It was not quite the experience that we had pictured. Um, when I tell you, like, we prepped for this, we made sure that we packed a bag of special toys that she could bring with us to dinner. Nothing that rolled, so no markers, no crayons, nothing with wheels, nothing that could slide across the table uh, because there's a giant hot pot in the middle of it. Um, nothing that had small parts because, you know, if she dropped it under the table... She was so excited. We were so excited to take her. I got her dressed in like a pretty fancy dress, uh, which I'm glad I did because that is the only time she's ever going to be able to wear that dress. It was so short on her. Um, and I've got a friend whose daughter is, she's under one. So I'm like, yo, if you want this dress, it's all yours when like, I'll wash it. And she's like, oh, thank you. Um, so the first course came out. The cheese. She picked the cheese. She picked the one. We had looked at the menu beforehand so she knew what it was going into it. Great. Fine. Perfect. These are all things that are, like, recommended from, like, parenting blogs, by the way. You know, like, you prepare your kid. So if it's a different situation, I let her know this is going to be a very long experience. It's not like when we go to dinner and then we get to come right home. Like, we'll be there for a long time. Which, by the way, we were there for an excessive amount of time. Excessive amount of time. But, um... Cheese came out, she dipped the first thing in cheese, and then decided she didn't want it. Um, I don't know if, like, the flavor of the wine was too much or whatever it is, but then they give you the, the stuff to dip. If you are near a melting pot, by the way, um, they didn't tell us this our first time that we went there. I think the waitress the one time overheard me saying something and was like, oh, you can get more. Um, all of the dippers, they can bring more out of. So if you're having your first course, for example, and it has the bread, the fruit, um, the uh, vegetables, things, they'll bring a whole other plate full of that out. Um, I think they do that for the desserts as well. I can't remember. And then for the entrees, they'll bring more of the vegetables out. Like they're obviously not going to bring you out another plate of meat because you're paying for that. But, uh, just a fun little tip because I, I know we didn't know that and I was shocked the one time when they were like, oh, we can bring you more of that. And I'm like, you can? Um, yeah, they want everything except for the meat. Yeah, I think I think they bring more desserts too, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Look at, look at well, we were, but I think yeah. that one time they did bring us more. Yeah, so anyway, first course comes and then she decides she wants some carrots. That's it. So like the waitress was really sweet, brought us a bowl of the baby carrots. So she had that to be snacking on the whole time um and then the salad came out she didn't want any of the salad and these are all things by the way we opted to go to a restaurant that carries food that we know she likes like cheese and meat and all that kind of stuff so it wasn't like we were taking a picky eater who doesn't like things dipped in cheese to a restaurant where they dip things in cheese okay so that turns into like, oh, okay, this is not going the way we want. Second course comes out, wants none of the salad. This girl loves salad. Third course comes out, which is the, the dinner and the meats. Again, the only thing she ended up eating was one piece of chicken. Like, literally this tiny little cube of chicken that had some cilantro on it. And I think that's the only reason why she ate it. And then the fourth course comes out. 
and little miss b sticks her hand right on the side of the hot pot and i'm like are you kidding like we've done so well up until this point like she may not have been eating a lot and her behavior may not have been great but we avoided the hot pot well that just kind of sent the rest of the night into like a let's scramble i literally asked for the check right away um briar of course had room for dessert and ate like the one point she's like i wish that i i wanted another brownie i'm like there is no more brownie briar there was two little pieces of brownie you ate all of the one that was for me and daddy got one bite of his and you ate the rest of his and i want more and i'm just like we have to go so brian takes her outside i'm packing up the bag i come outside and she is just weeping on the hood of the car and i'm like what the hell happened turns out Somebody wasn't paying attention. She was dicking around, per usual, face planted into the concrete, busted her lip open. I'm just like, well, this is not at all how I expected our little fondue experience to go. Um, so it is now the fondant experience. She is okay. She definitely busted her lip, but she didn't cause any damage to, like, her face or her teeth or anything like that like she really just fell and gave herself a fat lip and um she's she's doing totally fine now like she'll point out that it's still there but it doesn't hurt her at all so it was um an experience and nights like that as a parent are super draining because you're like I can't make this go any faster and I did everything I could on my end I even pulled out my phone to play some game with her and like let her watch a video which is not something I typically do um but she just, I think the cheese just wasn't what she was hoping it would be. And I think that kind of set the tone for the rest of the night. Which, you know, I can't blame her for. Because if I got food I didn't like and I knew that there were three more courses, I don't know that I'd be super keen on being like, all right, let's work through this, you know? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Man, my throat is dry. Let's get some water. <laughs> so, the next day, my husband and I both woke up. We were both like, oh my god, I can't believe that that happened. And we felt terrible. So, we took her to the play place, um, which she really likes to go to. We have passes for it. And she went for story time. Which they did in a totally different spot. And I was like, why is there nobody out here? And then I realized that everybody was in the other corner. And I'm like, oh, whoops. Um, and we have been... And she did a craft. And we've been talking about when you meet another kid. Because she'll say to me, oh, I played with that girl. And I'm like, well, do you know her name? And she's like, no. And we're trying to teach her when you meet somebody new. Say, hi, my name's Briar. What's your name? She did it to this little girl who was probably six, seven... And the little girl just looked at Briar and just kept going about her business. And, you know, she didn't seem super bothered by it. Briar, not the other little girl. Um, but she was just kind of like, oh, okay, well, I guess she's not going to tell me her name. And I'm like, look, just because you do the right thing in this world, like, life lesson here, kid, doesn't mean everybody else will, you know? Um, if anybody is physically watching this uh, YouTube, this YouTube, this women chat, uh... Um, this is probably, like, the most boring one ever, because I'm literally just sitting here laying 310 down. Um, anyhow. <laughs> so she did that, and then we were talking. My husband said to me, this girl looks really familiar. And I was like, oh, really? And as soon as he said it and he figured it out, I was like, oh, yeah. She used to be a waitress at a restaurant that we used to go to all the time, um, it's nothing special, but it's local, and it used to be down the street from where my husband works, so we would see her, she would wait on us all the time. Um, like, we're talking, when Briar was a baby, uh, we would take her over there, and I was talking to her, and her daughter, I think she said her daughter's too, but she was asking us about this place, because it was the first time she had ever been there, and it's really funny, like, where I live... If people have to go, like, two towns over, they act like it's the end of the world. Like, oh, my God, it's so far away. I'm like, it's like a 10-minute drive, 12-minute drive, seven miles away. Like, I don't know why that's... I told you when we first moved. Uh, you did. You sure did. And um, 
So she was saying, oh, you know, we really like it here, but it's really far away. And I'm like, oh, well, for me, and I know my motto is not the same as everybody else's, but, like, I'll drive for a day trip. Shoot, I'll drive up to two hours to go do something for the day. And then, you know, obviously things are a little bit different with pandemic world. Uh... But in general, like, that's my... I used to say I should get bumper stickers that say, have stroller, will travel, because I really am like that. I can't tell you how many times I've just hopped in the car and taken my kid to um, an aquarium or a kid's museum or, like, out of state, like, literally for just a couple hours so that she could have that kind of experience. Um, and she was telling me how she would love to go back to the aquarium now, we live pretty equidistant to two aquariums. One is in Camden, New Jersey, the Adventure Aquarium, which if you live anywhere near it, I highly recommend. Um, they have a lot of stuff that's very age appropriate for my daughter. And I think it's a really great value for your money. And then they have the uh, Camden Aquarium, National Aquarium, which is beautiful. It's significantly more expensive and you cannot take strollers. Baltimore. Yeah. You said Camden for both. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the right. first was Camden, the second was Baltimore. Um, and so we're we're about equidistance from both places. And we have been to both places quite a few times. Uh, we had passes for Camden for two-ish years, I think. Um, and I love taking her to the Camden Aquarium. Um, and so this girl was saying she wanted to take her daughter to the aquarium... Because uh, she wanted to do that before Baltimore instituted their vaccine mandate. Now, look, this is not, I'm not having this conversation to spark an argument. This is just me stating something and then we're going to move on from this. I have been saying, because people are always like, oh, well, the people who aren't wearing masks, they're the ones who are fully vaccinated. I'm like, yeah, that's not typically how it is. I'm sure some of them are. My husband and I are fully vaccinated. We wear a mask everywhere we go. I will wear a mask <laughs> inside a social situation. I always wear my mask because I, first of all, don't trust the other people. And um, that's my choice because I want to protect people around me. This girl is sitting here making that comment. And I just looked at her and I said, oh, well, your daughter, they aren't going to require a vaccine for a child who's under five. And she's like, yeah, she's only two. And I go, well, then she'll be fine. And then she just looked at me and I said, oh, you mean for the adults? I didn't say it in an accusatory way. I didn't, I wasn't implying anything. But she's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, then you are just proving my point sitting here. You, the three people in your family and all of these kids, none of you are wearing masks and none of you are vaccinated because you, none of you can go to the aquarium in Baltimore. I'm like, all right, let me take a few steps backwards <laughs> because I, I've got my mask on. I, uh, it just, it was very frustrating because, you know, but then I said to my husband, all right, well, are we ready to take a trip down to Baltimore? <laughs> my thing is. I understand that people aren't necessarily going to put a mask on their kid unless they're required to in certain situations. But if I know I can surround myself in a room where people are at least thinking of others and not just themselves, because I've been through this in case that wasn't obvious by the first 45 minutes of this whip and chat or whatever, um, I was taken down hard by covid and i would never wish that upon anyone and i'm gonna do my damnedest to not get it again um so anyway we did that and then uh went to five below which is right next door and she got a, a unicorn which okay you guys it is a cream colored unicorn with gold hooves and a gold uh, horn. And she named the unicorn Spot. <laughs> I think the reason she named it Spot. This is me trying to follow my four-year-old's brain waves. Um, I think it's because it has sparkly dots on the horns. And she just kind of was like, ooh, there's spots on here. And not in a way of like, you would name a Dalmatian Spot. 
Um, but I don't know because I'm not her and I don't know what goes on in that little weird brain of hers um, as much as I would love to. But we did that and then we went to lunch and it's funny she's like I'm not hungry and then as soon as my husband offered to like feed her fun fact my daughter will eat anything and everything but god forbid you make this kid eat mac and cheese without you putting it on the fork or spoon for her and just mac and cheese not even like spaghetti just mac and cheese um she ate the whole damn thing I'm like what the heck um so we did that and then we watched an episode of uh my little pony before bed if you guys don't know she gets one episode of tv before bed now it's a variety of different shows you um you may have it's typically still mickey um but we've also mixed gummy bears into the mix and um my little ponies and she was watching My Little Ponies, and this commercial came on for the Happy Napper. If you don't know what Happy Napper is, which I didn't know what it was, it is like a sleeping bag that folds up into a stuffed animal, but it's in the shape of whatever critter, creature, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever. She's like, oh my god, this is what I've been talking about. Mind you, this kid literally gets, like, at most, like, 30 minutes of TV, you know, in a day... Unless it's, like, snowing or, like, really bad weather out. Sometimes we'll extend it. Um, like, today she's going to get an episode of Paw Patrol after her nap because she earned it. Um, and I was like, what the F is this happy napper? So my husband and I are looking it up. And I'm like, holy shit, this thing is expensive. So I see it on sale at Bed Bath & Beyond for 50% off. It's twenty four ninety nine. So I'm like, yes, let's do it. Um, because essentially it's a sleeping bag and like sleeping bags shouldn't cost that much money. I, I mean, I'm not a camper, so I couldn't tell you the are average you cost napper? of a sleeping bag. Um, what? But are you a happy napper? Well, sometimes. Not always. Sometimes I'm an angry napper. But, um, I ordered it and she was like, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> the next day we were going to go do the pickup from Bed Bath & Beyond. We put her to bed, and then I got an email saying that they canceled my order. I was like, great, cool. So I went into her room, and I explained to her, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. You know, this is one of those things that, like, is lost on kids. They don't understand that, like, a store can cancel your order, or a restaurant can screw up your meal. It, like, you would have thought I just gave her the final blow. Like, she was just like... <gasps> <sighs> totally gutted and I was like I'm so sorry sweetheart I'm gonna see if I can order it and get it shipped to our house so um you haven't heard anything nope I have not I was just gonna say I ordered it and I keep checking my email to make sure that like they didn't cancel that but that said it wasn't gonna ship until February I think 4th so I still have a few days before they I guess can get to it and decide if if not I'm gonna have to order it from the website which would put us back at full price for it plus shipping and amazon's even more expensive you guys amazon was like ten dollars more i'm like what the um but my daughter really likes to sleep in like confined spaces so does this go here yeah you ever do that like put a drill down and then you're like does that is that where it's supposed to go so then friday friday is the day we're supposed to go to the store to pick this up we had this whole day planned so the phone rings at like 7.45 and I see it's my daughter's head teacher who we're supposed to have a session with at 9 a.m. And I'm like, hello? Now, I know someone out there is going to be like, you're not awake at 7.45. Let me tell you. I can tell that that's how her teacher felt. Because <laughs> you can tell she was like, oh, I woke you. Um, and she's like, uh, my son's had a close contact at daycare, so we have to keep him home and my mother-in-law's not feeling well. Can we reschedule our session? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Now, mind you, as soon as I got up, I saw that she had sent me an email at 7 a.m. that I hadn't responded to because I was still asleep. <coughs> so then, so, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm like choking over here. Um... I just totally forgot what I was talking about. Her teacher. Uh, uh, and then... 
Well, what was I saying about it? You're saying you got the email. You oh, yeah. So then I told Briar, okay, we weren't going to have your teacher today. And she was like, oh, she was so upset, which I can understand, you know. And then we had to tell her that we were also not going to go to the store. Because the way our day was supposed to go was head teacher. After that, we were going to go to Bed Bath & Beyond to pick up her happy napper. And then we were going to go to Barnes & Noble to pick up a baseball magazine for my... or Yeah, baseball magazine for my husband. And then go get pizza. Literally none of those things happened. There was no point in driving that far to go get the baseball magazine which total spoiler alert my husband found it at our local walmart um which he's been looking there like every year since we've lived here for this magazine and it's never there so it was kind of shocking but it was just one of those days where like literally everything that could go wrong went wrong everything was canceled nothing was happening i'm like god damn so the next day um Brian met up with a couple friends over her nap and I'd seen a local mom posting. They have these card tables. Now we have the Minnie Mouse one. That's like her little toddler size table that she has in the kitchen. And they had the Paw Patrol ones, the Minnie Mouse ones and the Blue's Clues ones on clearance at our Walmart for $20. And I was like, oh my gosh, now it's a table that comes with two folding chairs. The, cha the table is foldable. It's, uh, Got a surface you can wipe down. So what we're going to do is we're going to, when it gets warm, take the one that, uh, either the new one or the one that's in the kitchen, make one of them an outdoor one and one of them an indoor one. So she can do crafts and activities outside without having to sit on our patio furniture um, and have sessions with her therapist outside without... Um, have, yeah, having to sit on the ground or having to be in a camper chair. So it'll be really great. Um, I know she's going to love that. But it, it went right into the garage, you know. Um, the car. I need to take it. Oh, is it? Yeah. It oh, well. Cold yeah, it's been cold. It's been, like, bone-chillingly cold. But yesterday, I will leave you guys with my final thoughts here, my final story. Yesterday, I called my mom. And the first thing she says to me is, why are you calling? And I'm like, uh, because I call you like every single day. Now I call my mother or mother and father and his mother every day or almost every, sometimes we, we, it's every other day, just depending on how busy life gets. And my mom was like, what, why are you calling? And I'm like, uh, because we call you all the time. And she's like, no, you have to have ulterior motives. Now, mind you, we had our family Zoom scheduled for that night, um, which was uh, one. We were supposed to have it the week before, but the people who host it forgot about it. And they like remembered like three days later, which I'm like, OK. Um, and so the day before when I had spoken to my mom, she's like, all right, well, I'll see you tomorrow night. And I'm like, yeah. But that doesn't exclude me talking to her throughout the day. So I was I was so confused. And she's like, you have ulterior motives. And I'm like, what? I'm like, Mom, I swear to God, I'm literally just calling you because Briar said she wanted to talk to Mimi. We had already talked to my mother-in-law. And she's like, well, you don't usually call me this early. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you only call me at around 5 o'clock. Which, by the way, is not true. I call her anywhere between like 4 and 5.30, depending on how quickly we can get my daughter out of her room and downstairs. Cause after her nap, she likes to just like hang out in her room for a while. And I'm like, mom, it is four 35. Like, it's not like I'm calling you at nine o'clock in the morning, which by the way, I've also called my mom before lunch before, or even after lunch. Um, but usually when I call my mom during an hour that has AM after it, She's got something else going on. She had to go back to bed. She needed to do this. So I'm just like, we usually call her after the nap. It just makes it easier. So I'm talking to her and then she's like, so I'll see you tonight. And I was like, probably not. Um, because my ear still really hurts. And I was just, I was just not feeling great. And then she got all upset about that. And I was like, does that really bother you that much? And she's like, well, I would prefer it if you'd be there. 
instead of being like, oh, I'm sorry that you've been sick for over a month. Um, and I guess she never bothered to tell my dad that because I got a text message from my dad like 20 minutes into the Zoom being like, hey, we miss you. And when I was like, uh, I wasn't really planning on coming because I don't feel well, my dad was shocked. He had no idea. So that was super fun and awkward. Um, but I feel like that's a good place for me to end this. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure. I feel like I got a decent amount accomplished. It was literally just laying down some 310. There's a lot of color blocking going on here. This is one of those kits that's really interesting where it has like good chunks of color blocking. But then like this checkerboard pattern, uh, border, I guess, um, you're alternating like every two or four blocks. So it's still technically using your multi-placer, but it's a lot of like color blocking confetti. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more content like this or, you know, nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. While you're there, hit that notification bell. Dang. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time. And I record when my tiny <sighs> human is sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I'll see you on my next one. Bye, guys!